Hello everyone, I'm Andy Hall, Senior Partner Solution Architect with AWS, and I'm going to show you how to create a .NET application and store it in AWS CodeCommit. Additionally, I'll show you how to build and run your .NET Core application locally as a container using Docker and how to store your created image into Amazon Elastic Container Registry or ECR. In a second session, I'll show you how to create an Amazon Elastic Container Service or ECS cluster to run your container images, how to create an AWS code pipeline, and how to integrate the development of your container to ECS from your code pipeline. And lastly, I'll show you a working solution that allows you to automatically deploy your code changes to a running AWS Fargate container on an Amazon ECS cluster. In the AWS Management Console, I'm first going to create a new AWS Code Commit repository. This repository will be used to store my application. AWS Code Commit is a fully managed source control service that hosts secure Git based repositories. If you are unfamiliar, with the AWS code commit and the necessary setup to allow for Git access, please view the documentation available from the displayed link. To create the repository, I'm first going to go to AWS code commit. You see here, I don't have any repositories or anything set up currently on my system. So first, what I'm going to do is click the Create Repository button. I'm going to fill in a name and a description for the repository. Once those values are filled in, I'll click on the Create button to have my repository created. So I'm going to set the name. To ECS ASP Net. And the description. Now I'm going to click Create to create the repository. Now that I have a repository, I'm going to get the URL that I'll need to use to clone the repository. I can do that by clicking on the Clone URL dropdown, which will display various options that I can use to clone my repository. I can use HTTPS, SSH, or GRC. I'm going to use HTTPS since it is secure and doesn't require me to set up additional keys for or certificates. When I click on this button, the URL will be automatically copied to my local clipboard. Now that I have the URL for my repository, I'm going to move over to my development machine to create my project and store it in my AWS code commit repository. On my development machine, I have a sample ASP.NET Core application that I created previously. I'm going to open a PowerShell command window to execute a few commands to first get a local version of the newly created AWS code commit repository, then to move all the source from the project that I created into the new repository. Then I will commit the changes to the repository, connect Visual Studio to the new project location, and verify that everything exists in AWS code commit. In my PowerShell window, I'm going to execute a git command to retrieve or clone the previously created repository. In my PowerShell window, I'm going to execute a git command to retrieve or clone the previously created repository. And I'm going to call this code commit repo. So 
So the colon has completed, and now I have an empty repository that's hooked up to AWS code commit. Now that I have my repository, I'm going to copy all the files from the sample project into my repository using the same PowerShell window. You can see all the source was copied over successfully. Now, to verify that these new files are, are recognized in Git, I'm going to execute a simple git status command. And we can see new files are recognized. So now that my source is in the local repository, I'm going to commit the changes to the repository and push them to AWS code commit. So using the same command window, I'm going to do a git add to add everything. And now I'm going to do a git commit. And I'm going to specify that this is the initial check-in. Now I'm going to go ahead and push those changes to the repository. Since I've committed my source and pushed it into AWS code commit, I can now go back to the AWS management console to see my repository and the files that were recently added. I can see my project and all the recent files that were added. And they're all in code commit. At this point, I have my source code fully backed up to AWS code commit. Now, I'd like to run Docker on my local machine to test that the project will run without issue as a container. Using the same PowerShell window on my local machine, I'm going to execute a Docker build command. This will be perform all the necessary steps to build my project, create the necessary libraries and binaries, and to create a local container image. To perform the Docker build, I'm going to execute the Docker build command, specifying the fact that I want to tag this image that it's created. Additionally, I'll specify the location of the Docker file. So I'm going to use Docker build dash t to specify tag. I'm going to set this as ECS ASP net dash core. And for the file, I'm going to set that to ECS ASP net core Docker file. And the Docker build has completed successfully. To verify that I have an image, I'm going to go ahead and run Docker images and verify that the ECS ASP.NET Core project was created. Now that I've successfully built my project using Docker and have a local container image created, I'm going to run it to verify that it works correctly. I'll use a docker run command using the same PowerShell window as before. Here I have docker run and the name of the image. Additionally, I'm specifying that the container will be available on port 8080. So I'm going to execute this command, and the container will be up and running. Now, going back to my browser window, this is the IP address of the host machine where the container is running, and here is port 8080. I'm just going to refresh this browser window and we can see the running application. And the application is available and running.
I may go ahead and close the browser window and shut down the running container. Since I have tested the Docker image for my container and everything is working, I'm going to use the AWS tools for PowerShell to create an Amazon Elastic Container Registry, or ECR, to store my container image. By using the AWS tools for PowerShell, I can easily create an ECR repository and store or push my container image to it. If you're unfamiliar with the AWS tools for PowerShell, you can get them by using the displayed link. Using the same PowerShell window as before, I'm going to create my Amazon ECR repository. In order to create the repository, I first have to log in. Now that I've successfully logged in, I can now create my Amazon ECR repository. I'm going to use the AWS tools for PowerShell, new ECR repository command, and I'm going to create a repository called ECS ASP.NET. I'm going to store the result of that in a local variable called ECS ASP Net Core. Since I've created the repository, the next step is to tag my local Docker image to an image for my repository. To tag my image, I can use the following commands. First, I am going to create a variable that contains the full URI, including the latest tag for my image. And I'm going to store that in a local variable. Next, I'm going to use Docker to tag my local image. Now that I've tagged my image, I can now push it to my ECR repository using the Docker push command. Once this command completes, I can view the repository and verify that my image is there. Now the push command is complete. I'm going to go to my ECR repository and verify that the image exists. Here I am back in my AWS Management Console. I am going to go to ECR. Here you can see my repository and the image that I recently pushed to it. At this point, I have my application source fully backed up in AWS code commit. I have a working container that I've tested locally, and I have a place to store my container images in Amazon ECR. Join me for the next video where I'll show you how to create an Amazon ECS cluster to run your container on AWS Fargate and how to leverage AWS code pipeline to have a full CI CD pipeline to update your running containers as you make code changes. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you found this video useful.